essentially what this is doing, right? That's exactly right. All right. 20. 15. In just a moment, let's listen to them and let's listen to the launch. 10. The launch is go for main engine start. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour, preparing our home in space for a larger international family. Houston now controlling. Houston Endeavour roll program. Roger roll, Endeavour. Commander Chris Ferguson confirming Endeavour is rolling on course for a rendezvous with the International Space Station. Feet a thousand miles an hour. To one mile, downrange distance six and a half miles from Kennedy Space Center already. Three engines throttling down to 72 percent of the rate of thrust as the shuttle goes through the realm of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Altitude five miles, downrange eight miles from Kennedy Space Center. Speed 1500 miles an hour. Endeavor, go at throttle up. All systems remain go. Anybody who remembers Challenger remembers that's when that accident occurred. This is a key point when uh, the engines actually thrust to in excess of 100%. I'm not sure how that works, but 104% or so. 109 eventually. Yeah, 109. So uh, that's uh, that's like the maximum pressure on the shuttle as it goes up in that in that time frame, right? Right. That's why we throttle down. They call it throttle bucket. If you look at the thrust profile, it goes down like this to take the heavy loads, drop them down just a little bit. All right. And as as we go up, we're watching very closely as we reach the point where those twin solid rocket boosters will come off, be jettisoned, they go back into the sea, and boy, it was just bright as day here, wasn't it? I felt like I needed Absolutely. my sunglasses on. What are you feeling on board the shuttle at this time? Well, we're, if we're at, we're just about at two minutes, yeah, so the thrust is starting to tail off on the SRBs, and you can see there's the separation, and you can feel that sudden drop from two and a half Gs down to just a little bit more than one time your normal weight. Yeah. And then think it's very smooth. Boost drops confirms a clean separation of the two solid it's rockets. Almost, it's almost like a lazy thing space with space tremendous speeds. This is a moment where you breathe a sigh of relief uh, on board, right? Because the solids are gone. They're, they're, they're loud, they're rumbly, there's a lot of vibration. All of a sudden, you go to a much smoother ride. Right. And they it? can't be turned off. So the, the main cool engines can be controlled, but the, the solids, once they light, they're burned until they're done. Now, what we do have also as well, as we should be seeing shortly, are pictures on board. There you see those twin solid rocket boosters. Almost looks like a couple of cigarettes that have been tossed off of a, a vehicle on the road or something. As they make their way down, they come down by parachute or fished out of the water and reused, repacked. And there you see what looks like a, a planet or a star, and that's the space shuttle Endeavour on its way. That's right. And at a night like this, you can see it for a long ways. We can still see it out there behind us. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. You, if you're lucky, and it's not cloudy, which today is crystal clear, beautiful day for lunch. We can see it all the way to the horizon. That'd be really amazing. And at this point, the crew uh, is starting to get uh, the sensation of additional G-forces, more pressure on them. And that steadily builds up. Explain right. how the, that goes. The shuttle, the thrust from the engines is constant. So as the vehicle gets lighter, the acceleration increases. So when the solid rocket motors dropped away, we went down to just a little bit more than one times our normal weight. But as we lose weight and burn up propellant, we'll actually get up to three times our normal weight. And then the shuttle's only designed for three times its normal weight. So we actually throttle the engines back again and hold at three Gs for about 30 seconds. Now, in, uh, in the post-Columbia era, there's a lot of concern about debris, of course. Did you, in, in the course of your missions, did you ever notice any things falling on the... Uh... You really can't see it because it's all behind you or at the belly. You can't see the belly when you're inside the shuttle. But we did have some concern. They had changed the rules from the EPA with Freon, and they changed the way they sprayed the foam on, and we had a lot of what they call popcorn with, yeah. foam, with foam popping off. And so we were taking a lot of very careful pictures of the tank once we got to orbit. Yeah. Then you can see it after you separate. All right. Janice Fox, thank you very much. They just said negative returns so far. This has been a uh, flawless uh, launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Still on their way up.
now uh, four minutes in, another four minutes or so on those uh, that main engine, and uh, we'll keep you posted. We'll let you know when that main engine goes off and they're safe and sound in orbit. Back to you, Kitty. All right, thanks very much, Miles O'Brien, Janice Vaughn. Our special coverage of the Shuttle Endeavour's mission to the International Space Station continues now with Campbell Brown. Campbell? All right, Kitty, thanks very much. And as we said, lots of breaking news tonight. Before we get to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama discussing the Secretary of State's job, we are going to stay with our breaking news coverage of the Shuttle Endeavour's climb into space. It is the 126th Space Shuttle launch. We're going to continue watching for several more minutes until it is safely in orbit. And go back now to space correspondent Miles O'Brien, who's with us from Cape Canaveral. And Miles, take it away and walk us all through, if you would, for viewers who are just now joining us, uh, what this mission is really about. Well, Campbell, this is a mission about expanding the capability of the International Space Station. The crew of seven is bringing uh, up to the space station an additional bathroom, some sleeping quarters, and a, and a water purification system that will allow them to recycle all their wastewater, making it possible for a six-person crew to get on that space station and, and finally do what it set out to do, which is perform some science in space. I wanted to bring in, uh, if I could, Janice Voss, astronaut who's flown on the space shuttle five times. We're looking at pictures that are come uh, from uh, on board the uh, external fuel tank, looking back at the orbiter as you see it make its way up. Now, uh, six minutes after it left, left the launch pad here, uh, Janice, at this juncture, there's no uh, returns, right? They've gone past all of their potential emergency return options, right? To coming back to the Cape returns, right? right. There's, a, there's overseas aboard. Right. And so, potentially, if they were to lose an engine here, what would happen? Or would they, would they go across the uh, ocean or perhaps uh, to have a diminished orbit? Um, we just hit the... So we just hit the where they could lose two engines, single engine, across the ocean to Spain or France. Okay, okay. All right. So, so far this has gone off exactly as you'd like. At this point, what's that crew feeling? What are they experiencing? Well, they're very focused on main engine cutoff because there's a lot. There's some thrust separation that happens. They have to make sure they get a clean separation from the external tank. So they're watching that data. Yeah. Now they will have an opportunity once there's separation with the external fuel tank to take a look at it. Although this is going to be in darkness, and so they won't have a great opportunity really to see what kind of debris might have come off that external fuel tank. That's right? correct. In this case, they won't get any good photography. That's right. right. So, but th these pictures that you're seeing right now, while it's it's good for television, th the engineers are going to need this data to make sure that something hasn't flown off. I haven't seen anything, right. but it's been difficult tonight. That's right. They'll, they'll go back through frame by frame, and when there's enough light glow from the flame, that you'll be able to see debris coming off the tank, yeah, if they have, if there is any. Let's talk a, a word as they, as they make their way up to the space station. The, the significance of having a six-person crew um, for this $100 billion space station, what does that mean? The amount of time we have available to do science goes from hundreds of hours to thousands of hours. So we can really take advantage of all the money we've invested in building this station to do some really first-class research. And the crew will dock with the International Space Station on Sunday afternoon as they're traveling... 16,000 miles an hour. It's, of course, there's no sensation of 16,000 miles an hour when you're in that position, right? No, you can't see anything flying by, especially in darkness. All right, we're now uh, about 8 minutes and 15 seconds in. In about 10 or 15 seconds, you're going to see this camera move away from the uh, orbiter Endeavour as this uh, solid rock, excuse me, as the external tank separation occurs. The external tank uh, ends up in the drink in uh, the Indian Ocean. It's the one significant piece that isn't reused. What, what do we look Okay, the engines have cut off, and now we watch the separation. And there's there that goes. picture there. Yep. That's quite a shot there, as you see the belly with those uh, heat-resistant tiles, and the orbiter moves away. And you can see the way. thrusters firing those flashes of the thrusters, the separation thrusters, moving it away. That's quite a shot. Endeavour on its way to the International Space Station, that external tank on its way to the Indian Ocean. Janice Voss, thank you for living through that experience. I'm sure if you had your way, you'd like to be on board there and on your way to the International Space Station. But uh, that is uh, quite a sight to see. Uh, you've been it is. What a great way to spend a Friday night. Not required. All right. Thank you very much, Dennis. And back to you, Campbell and Eva.
All right. Our thanks to Miles O'Brien and to astronaut Janice Foss there as Endeavor begins that 15-day mission.